Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in the bustling streets of New York City, Andre stands as a formidable figure, a seasoned homicide detective with the NYPD. From the tender age of 13, he shouldered the weight of tragedy, leaving to care for his widowed mother when his father, a fellow officer, fell in the line of duty, a victim to ruthless assailants. Despite the sorrow etched into his past, Andre's resolve only strengthened, his singular focus fixed on justice. Throughout his illustrious career spanning nearly two decades, Andre garnered a reputation as a relentless pursuer of justice, particularly when it came to apprehending those responsible for the deaths of his brethren in blue. With eight cop killers meeting their demise at his hands, Andre's name echoed through the precincts, feared and revered. Yet he found himself under the scrutinizing gaze of internal affairs, tasked with investigating his latest confrontation. Unwavering in his stance, Andre met their inquiries with a calm demeanor, neither repentant nor boastful, but simply stating the facts. Each previous encounter had been scrutinized and cleared, a testament to his unwavering dedication to upholding the law. Beyond the confines of his duty, Andre's heart remained tethered to his mother, Vanetta, a woman whose mind danced between memories and confusion, often mistaking her son for the love she had lost. In the quiet moments between cases, Andre's sole focus shifted to caring for her, a beacon of solace in a world fraught with chaos. Meanwhile, amidst the skyline of Manhattan, two would-be criminals, Michael and Ray, found themselves entangled in a web of greed and opportunity. Their plan to pilfer a cache of coke from a local wine shop took an unexpected turn, when they stumbled upon a treasure trove of uncut narcotics, far beyond their wildest expectations. As Ray reveled in the promise of newfound riches, Michael's apprehension loomed like a shadow, casting doubt upon their reckless endeavor. With the weight of their illicit bounty bearing down upon them, their fates collided with the arrival of law enforcement, plunging them into a desperate struggle for survival, amidst the echoing gunfire of a city in turmoil. In the heart of the city that never sleeps, chaos erupts in a deadly symphony of gunfire, as Michael and Ray unleash hell with their automatic weapons, overpowering the unsuspecting police officers. The aftermath leaves devastation, seven brave members of the NYPD falling in line of duty. Tasked with unraveling this harrowing tragedy is Andre, a stalwart detective with a reputation for hunting down those who dare to harm his brothers and sisters in blue. Briefed on the scene by Captain McKenna, the weight of the loss is palpable as officers from the 85th Precinct mourn their fallen comrades. McKenna, with a steely resolve, implores Andre to uphold his reputation and bring the killers to justice, no matter the cost. As the gravity of the situation sinks in, Andre is directed to collaborate with narcotics detective Frankie, a partnership he begrudgingly accepts. The stakes are high, the volume of drugs involved is staggering, and Andre knows the road ahead will be fraught with peril. In a secluded hideaway, Michael's fury burns hot, as he confronts Ray for the catastrophic loss of life. Seven officers, their blood staining their hands, their souls marked by the weight of their actions. Ray's impulsive brutality has sealed their fate as fugitives, condemned to a life on the run. Desperate for a way out, they turn to their contact, Bush, demanding a larger share of the illicit deal that could secure their escape from the tightening grip of law enforcement. Back at the crime scene, Andre meticulously pieces together the puzzle left by the robbers. The haul of 300 kilos of coke was far beyond what they could handle, only a fraction was taken, a mere 50. With just two individuals and a compact BMW, the odds seem stacked against them. The arrival of the FBI, assuming jurisdiction, ignites a spark of conflict. Both Andre and McKenna vehemently oppose the federal intervention, knowing that time is of the essence in catching these killers, before they vanish into the shadows of the city. Driven by a keen sense of deduction and unwavering determination, Andre formulates a daring plan. With the belief that the drugs will be peddled under the cover of darkness, he urges for a citywide lockdown. Every bridge, every tunnel, and every avenue of escape sealed tight until the crack of dawn. Police Chief Spencer, recognizing the brilliance in Andre's strategy, throws his support behind the plan. The wheels are set in motion as the FBI reluctantly agrees to lock down all 21 Manhattan bridges, close off transportation routes, and patrol the rivers. The city becomes a fortress, its pulse slowed to a tense heartbeat, as the hunt for Michael and Ray intensified. The countdown begins, with each passing moment bringing them closer to the elusive morning deadline of five. As the city grapples with the deadly heist, Bush leads Michael and Ray to their potential savior, the formidable buyer known as Hawk. Initially met with derision at their demand for a larger cut, Michael astutely crunches the numbers. The 50 kilos they possess could multiply to a staggering 200 kilos on the streets, fetching a total of nearly six and a half million dollars. With this newfound perspective, 
Hawk acquiesces, paving the way for a lucrative deal that could secure their freedom. Hawk however directs them to another key player in their desperate game, Adi, a seasoned professional in money laundering and identity forging. With promises of offshore accounts, new identities, and the vital travel documents they need, Adi becomes their beacon of hope in the impending doom. Meanwhile, the relentless pursuit of justice inches closer as the investigation unravels a crucial piece of evidence, a damning photo of Michael and Ray caught running a red light. Moving on to Bush's former flame, Yolanda, whose apartment becomes the target of a swift police raid. Though she hasn't seen Bush since their breakup, the traffic camera photos confirm Ray and Michael's identities. The pasts of the fugitives come to light in stark contrast, Ray, a troubled youth turned soldier, and Michael, once a bright star whose world dimmed with the loss of his brother Arvel in Afghanistan. Their paths converged in a bond of brotherhood, forged in the crucible of grief and disillusionment, leading them down a path of crime and desperation. Amidst the chaos, they find themselves ensnared in a deadly web of circumstances. The noose blames the lockdown on the island, trapping them in a maze of concrete and steel. In a cruel twist of fate, Bush unknowingly walks into a police stakeout, meeting his end at the hands of Sergeant Butcho, seeking vengeance for his fallen comrades. Andre arrives on the scene, only to find their lead snuffed out, and suspicion hanging thick in the air. A tense confrontation with Butcho escalates, culminating in a violent clash of wills. The fragile balance of the situation teeters on the edge, as Andre struggles to maintain control amidst the turmoil. At Adi's fortified condo, a tense exchange unfolds as funds are transferred to offshore accounts, under new identities for Ray and Michael. The looming threat of law enforcement crashes through the door, unleashing a deadly firefight that claims Adi's life, but not before he passes crucial information to Michael. As Andre races against time, he arrives just in time to catch a glimpse of Michael and Ray's desperate flight from the scene. In a heart-pounding chase through the building's corridors, Ray, wounded and desperate, makes a fateful decision to split from Michael, hoping to buy him time to escape. Adrenaline pumping and stakes soaring, Andre tracks Ray to a chilling standoff in a doorway. In a moment of panic, Ray fires a fatal shot at a bystander, before Andre takes him down, the weight of tragedy heavy in the air. Meanwhile, Michael, cornered amidst frozen carcasses, takes Frankie hostage in desperation. In a daring standoff, Andre chooses a different approach, attempting to reason with Michael, appealing to the soldier buried beneath layers of fear and desperation. As the tension reaches its breaking point, Michael's eyes are open to the truth, the killings, the chaos, all orchestrated by Ray. A cascade of realizations crashes over him, and with a heavy heart, he reveals a string of suspicious events that point to Ray's true nature. In a moment of clarity amidst the chaos, Michael makes a decision that will alter the course of their fates. With Andre's words echoing in his mind, he takes a stand against the darkness that has consumed them, aiming for redemption. The city holds its breath as the final act unfolds, a gripping battle of wills and wits amidst the steel and shadows of New York City. In the heart of the storm, Andre stands as a beacon of justice, ready to face whatever darkness emerges from the depths of the night. At a wine shop, the worker noticed the time just before the police arrived. The officers knocked quietly, which was odd for a robbery call. Later, at the cleaner's condo, Adi was shot through the peephole without warning. He knew they were from the 85th precinct before seeing them. Michael dashed through the meat locker, freed Frankie, and blocked the door with a screwdriver. He fled on foot, leaving Frankie upset for not taking the shot. Finding refuge at the nearby Parallax Hotel, Michael held a guest in his room and took his laptop. Meanwhile, the FBI reminded McKenna that the island would soon reopen. McKenna praised Andre for taking down Ray, and was confident Andre would find the other suspect soon. Michael used Adi's password to access the flash drive, discovering files implicating corrupt officers from the 85th precinct in drug trafficking. He changed his appearance and tried to avoid the police. During a chase, Michael darted in front of a vehicle, dropped his money bag, and narrowly escaped a bullet when Andre intervened. As morning approached, the subways reopened, and Michael headed underground. Cornered on a train, he surrendered to Andre's promise of safety, trusting him as the cop who talks first and shoots second. Just as Michael lowered his weapon, Frankie shot him from behind, thinking Andre was in danger. Michael whispered the flash drive password to Andre before passing away. Frankie reported the shooting, and Andre discovered her call to Lieutenant Kelly before the raid on Adi's condo. Suspicious, Andre returned to confront McKenna, gun in hand. McKenna, unapologetic, revealed the 85th Precinct's role as armed security for a drug dealer. Adi's targeting was a stroke of bad luck in the wine shop robbery. McKenna defended the Precinct's actions, 
highlighting the sacrifices officers make. Haunted by his father's death and the realities of police life, Andre refused to turn a blind eye. As officers from the 85th surrounded the house, Andre fought back, taking them down one by one, including McKenna. Cornered by Frankie, Andre revealed he had copied the flash drives. He persuaded Frankie to surrender, preventing her daughter from growing up motherless. In the aftermath, Andre drove across the Manhattan Bridge, the flash drive still stained with blood in his car. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.